Hello and a wonderful good day here from the trails on an exceptionally hot day in Chamonix. We have a blue sky, we have Mont Blanc just there in the background hiding in the clouds a little bit. And this is the perfect day I thought to talk a little bit about my favorite kind of small gear items that I take with me on every shoot I go. Is it in nature, uh, some outdoor scenes in rain, in snow. I had these on my recent trip to Svalbard where I filmed a documentary movie about us crossing it. <sighs> Ooh, I need a break there because walking and talking at the same time uphill is apparently very hard. So I would say let's get right to it. My favorite small item skill list that I take on adventure film shooting days. Yeah, perfect. All right, so every time I'm out shooting in nature or outdoors in rough terrain, even uh, in snowstorms or uh, rain or sun or whatever, I always try to have uh, long pants with lots of pockets or some shorts with lots of pockets on me, uh, which is not my first favorite item, although it is pretty nice to have long pants with lots of pockets when you're filming. But the first item is right where it belongs in my case, and that is microfiber cloth in my front pocket. And this is something I learned on Svalbard when it was raining and snowing and wet all the time, kind of. And I, at one point, was sick of getting my backpack off, my fiber, microfiber cloth out of the backpack and cleaning my lenses and don't know where to put it. Um, I had this waterproof pants and the pockets were kind of waterproof too, so this cloth kind of stayed dry the whole trip. So this is where I put it, front pocket, clean the lens, put it back, and it takes five seconds uh, to do everything right. The second item on my favorite items list is technically two items, but uh, it's the same thing all in all and that's a Swiss army knife and a tool which is meant for mountain biking originally I think and I just happen to have it at home. It's super sturdy, it never breaks how mad or hard, how hard I abuse this one and uh, it's kind of uh, the standard or the norm to have a Leatherman these days but I just happen to have these ones because I had that in, I had this one at home since about 10 years and then this has a very nice thing on its knife from my lovely girlfriend so this one has a screwdriver here it has another screwdriver in there this has all the keys I need for every single screw I have on my camera equipment on my drones uh, and everything I take with me when I'm outdoors so when I need to fix something this or this is always in my backpack this next item is something I found through the hobby of FPV flying what I do since a few years now and it is a SD card holder. That doesn't sound new at all because everyone has an SD card holder at home probably. But I found what happens to be the best one I ever found anywhere. And that's this one, which is designed like a little credit card. It fits 10 SD cards, micro SD cards. And I have them always handy in my backpack. I put it in my wallet or in some pockets or usually in a, like a Ziploc bag in my backpack. So I know whenever I need a micro SD card, which is for my drone, for my GoPro, if I'm with other skiers, for example, skiing, if they have GoPros and their storage is full, I have spare 128 gigabytes times 10 SD cards in here. And I think this is so well designed that this belongs into my list of my favorite outdoor uh, gear items that just make my day better when I'm out filming. One thing that lives in my backpack forever in a closed Ziploc uh, pocket is a carabiner because these things are extremely helpful when you need to attach something to something. So in my case, I use these carabiners to attach my camera to my backpack on these little uh, straps and hooks so that I can comfortably hike and walk with my camera strapped in front of me and it's handy all the time. I just need to unclip it and I can film clip it again and the camera is stored in a way that it doesn't bother me and I can hike while having it super accessible and with the carabiners normally comes something like a sling these are normally used for climbing but uh, I just happen to have many of those and repurpose them so what I would do sometimes is attach my camera to a sling onto this camera and then just have my camera around my neck if I don't have a backpack on <gasps> like so and then this would be my camera hanging here which is super helpful in some situations when you don't have a backpack and still want to use a sling so for me this is something together with the slings uh, that I always happen to have when I'm outdoors filming stuff 
Oh, and these are addition to that small carabiners. You never know when you need those. Uh, they are definitely not made for climbing and you should definitely not hang yourself on these. But you can attach small things to some other things, which is sometimes pretty helpful to have those as well. Okay, for the next one I need to get to my backpack because it's in here. And these are volley straps or volley straps or volley, volley, volley. Probably volley. If you're a skier and you're into backcountry skiing and you have lots of friends who do backcountry skiing, chances are that you know these things because they are originally designed to hold skis. Like it's the better ski strap. I have to admit it is true, it is the better, better ski strap. And I exclusively use these things for my skis. But I also use these things to attach things with tension to other things. So it doesn't really hold so good when there's no tension, it will just open. But if, for example, I need to attach a tripod to a tree while it's hanging or my GoPro stick to a branch of a tree to film something from the top down, this is usually the thing I use because you can just strap it around, tighten it really hard and they th these things, they will hold. They hold a lot of pressure and they come in different sizes and lengths, so kind of small ones. This is more heavy duty ones um, to attach bigger things to some things probably, but uh, very useful and then just like a longer thing because you never know. So this is something which I have to admit I don't always have in my bag when I'm outdoors, but when I have it I usually need it and when I don't have it I usually need it and I'm mad at myself that I didn't bring those. So some two or three volley straps in my backpack. Never a bad idea to have those. This is most often overlooked, but just as important as all the other film gear. That's a high calorie snack, because trust me, on a stressful shooting day outdoors, you will probably forget to eat. And that's my case. So that's why I bring some bars that will pump energy into my body in no time. So I can go back to shooting uh, in a few minutes. Very good. Well, we're coming to the final three items that I always take with me on any adventure shoot I go to. And this item, which I want to show you now, is a lens barrel. In this case, it's two lens barrels uh, from F-stop, the small one and the large one. And what I do is not use them for lenses normally, because in my F-stop backpack, there is this ICU, the internal camera unit. And I just happen to put all my lenses into the ICU because it's just made for it and it's nice. But these lens barrels are pretty, uh, these lens barrels are pretty nice to put for example my small drone in here in the large lens barrel because my drone fits in here which is helpful in some stressful uh, no time situations and it helped me a lot on Svalbard for example and then the small lens barrel is usually where I put all my batteries uh, that are full for that day so I have everything in one place and if I'm in a rush I always attach this to my waist strap on the other side so I have uh, something like a battery Battery, 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 a battery pocket on my waist strap here. And if my camera runs out and I have no time to switch anything uh, or to get my backpack off, I just happen to have them here, which is super handy and they don't kind of fly around in my backpack. So lens barrels, super useful. Uh, these ones from f -Strap, I love them because you can attach them to a strap. You can open them like this so you don't have to have a strap that is uh, open on one side. You can attach them to a loop as well. And then these kind of things on the side are very nice to put a carabiner on. And there we have the carabiners again, like here. Because if you attach this to your waist strap and you open your waist strap, chances are that this will just fall off the waist strap. And to avoid it, use a carabiner, attach it to your backpack and you're safe because it has happened to me before. So this is something I didn't know existed until my Svalbard trip where I used this every day or almost every day on the trip on those 40 days when we were skiing and it is a book but it's not only any book it's a waterproof book and with this comes a waterproof pen. So what this is useful for is probably if you're on the longer trip or on extreme environments where it's probably either super cold or rainy or wet or moist or whatever, this could be in the rainforest. In my case, it was the Arctic, where it was raining and snowing um, half of the time. And this is, I think, designed for military uses. So 
everything that is for the military probably has to be super rugged and this is so definitely recommend uh, a waterproof book and a waterproof pen if you want to write down anything it is my diary that I wrote on the trip and that has inspired my narration for the documentary film I made. I had my interview questions in here because when you're in the cold, you I just don't want to rely on my phone. I know that my phone isn't the newest and that the battery will probably die sooner or later every day when I use it too often. So that's why I use the old school method and I loved it. I absolutely love it. So for the number nine item on my list, I don't even have to think about packing it into my backpack when I'm outdoors because it is attached to my lenses all the time and that is a thick threaded follow focus gear ring. Normally these rings are made for photographic lenses or old vintage lenses because other than cinema lenses they usually don't have a geared focus ring. So what I did, even though I didn't use a follow focus on my Svalbard film last year, I bought these geared focus rings that you can just pull over your photographic lenses and the zoom rings. I bought it for every single one of my prime lenses that I had with me for one simple reason because I would probably 99% of the time have gloves on and then thick gloves because it's still the Arctic and it's cold. And with these gear rings you just feel the focus way better than without and you can uh, be in a hurry, it can be in a snowstorm, it can be super cold, your fingers can be numb and that happened to me as well on this trip but you will be able to feel this, uh, the focus through this geared focus ring and if you're using a follow focus it's uh, essential to have so that's like kind of like a bonus for me there. Well there's one last thing that I want to show you and this is on my camera so I get it right here and this is not an item that is on my favorite gear list normally but it's something I wanted to show you which is super helpful and it was super helpful for my Svalbard trip. And this is this thing here. It's just an updated eyepiece for my Sony camera. And if you use a DSLR camera or DSLR style camera for your films, then buying one of these, which covers the whole eye when you look through it, is super essential, especially when you're out in bright sunlight. And in my case, it was snow. So everything is white, everything is super bright. This keeps the light outside of your viewfinder. Super handy, would definitely recommend if you have a DSLR camera or DSLR style camera to get one of these if you're shooting outdoors and in bright conditions for a long period of time because it helps. So that's a wrap for my items list of small things that make my day better on a shooting day when I'm outdoors or in rough terrain or any kind of bad or good weather outdoors. And I know some of those, or maybe all of those things, are not new to you or to anyone, but it took me, for example, way too long to figure out that I could just take carabiners and some climbing slings to attach my camera to my backpack. And if you happen to like this content and you want to see more, then make sure to hit that subscribe button down below and maybe also the like button, because I will be posting new videos every week about everything related to my approach to adventure filmmaking when I'm outdoors, tips and tricks and anything else that I or maybe you can think of when we're talking about adventure filmmaking. Have a very great day and see you next time.